It's Don here from the board. Thank you for coming along and checking out this video. Today, we're going to be looking at something slightly different in that it's not actually keyboard related. What it is, in fact, is a different input device, the old offsider to our keyboards, which is the mouse. Uh, I don't really know how to, to say this, except for the fact that, you know, I'm reviewing a mouse sent to me by Josh from Pluggable. Um, it's the first time I've actually had to review uh, a mouse device, so I do apologize if I kind of fumble around a little bit in regards to uh, this review. I tried to look up this device on Pluggable's website and turns out that there's actually nothing there except for a travel mouse because this isn't actually officially released yet. Now, Josh from Pluggable had alluded to them making a mouse and it was being developed and everything else and when he offered to send one to me for review, I actually thought it was ready to go, which it is as you can see in the package in front of me, but it's currently not actually available for purchase. So thank you very much, Josh, for sending me this unit um, and let's have a look at it. So it's very neatly packaged. It's very professional looking. It's very clean, very simple. It doesn't scream you know, really loudly at you trying to impress you with its packaging or anything fancy graphics of the sorts. Pluggable, of course, up there, performance mouse. And down here, it says, for gaming and precision applications. Now, I don't know who came up with that phrase, but I'm not quite sure if anybody ever wants to buy a device for non-precise applications. That's just me. I, I had a little bit of a giggle when I saw that simply because, well, you know, no, that's, that's too precise for me. I want something that's less precise. We just flip that around um, and have a look, of course, at the specs that are listed on the back here. And just reading off the screen, Pixart PMW3360 sensor, uh, 250 IPS and 50G acceleration, no spin outs, no angle snapping, just raw one-to-one -one input. We've got Omron mechanical switches, rated for 20 million clicks. Not quite at the level of our mechanical keyboard switches, which with at least MX style, you're looking at 50 mil. It's plug and play, which is fantastic. That's what we like, and that's what Pluggable sort of touts itself for. And it's got the 1000 hertz polling rate. So it's certainly gonna capture all the movements that you're gonna be making on this, unless if you can move faster than 1000 hertz. Now, we've got some features down the bottom. So on the fly DPI adjustment, always great for gaming, especially if you're gonna be moving between fine sort of, you know, large scale movements to very small scale movements for things like sniping from a distance. Flexible braided cable, excellent. Braided cables are always much better than a plastic sheathed cable because they tend to keep their shape and move your mouse around when you get into kinked situations. Um, ergonomic design, rubberized shell, a PF, PTFE, uh, Teflon mouse feet, and three-stage LED on DPI matching scroll and DPI matching with breathing base. So, yeah. Nice and simple, looks good. Now, of course, I haven't opened the packaging and, and the seals are, are still complete here, so we're gonna crack that open. But first looks, it's a good sized mouse and comparing it to my hands, you can sort of see that it's, it's a reasonable fit. And of course, what I've been using for the last couple of years um, is my Call of Duty version of the Logitech G9X, which has the uh, interchangeable weight cartridge inside it, which I've got it set to the heaviest possible setting. So it will be interesting because I can feel just by holding the box, it is actually a lighter mouse. So let's uh, get this baby open. Let's see what's in the box. Excusing the uh, traffic behind me from outside. So there's our braided cable. It looks quite nice. It's uh, a black and white, sort of black gray uh, material. There's a, a bit of a filter, I believe, in there, ground filter. USB, it's got a nice little plastic protection on it and it's just tied there with a bit of a twist tie, fairly standard. What else do we have in the box? We've got a, a single card, which is our quick start guide and just a couple of button layouts and LED modes, which seem to be controllable from the bottom. 
Um, now we get into actually sliding the mouse out. Okay. So there's the box. There's the mouse. I do like the fact that it's got minimal packaging, which is great. It's much better for the environment. Uh, I don't know if the plastic shell bit is recyclable, but the rest of the packaging cardboard certainly is. Nice and lightweight, keeps your costs down as well. So let's just put that aside. And let's have a look at the mouse before we plug it in. So there it is in all its glory. That surface texture is uh, actually really nice. It's really lovely. It's nice and smooth. That's the rubberized that we're talking about. You've got a, a soft wheel. Now I'm just going to move the microphone a little bit closer so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. So there's definitely tactileness to that, but it's not... You can't get it to free spin uh, like some mouse varieties do, but it's certainly got a couple of clicks so you can you can actually flick it and it will actually go a couple of clicks which is great um, in terms of the Omron switches nice and clicky you can definitely hear there's actually a difference in the sound though but I'm not quite sure what the main cause is for that uh, if I do that with my my Logitech if I can get the cable long enough over there And then with the uh, pluggable, slightly different pitch, but both mice actually have variable tones happening there, uh, which is kind of interesting. Of course, in the middle, we've got a, a DPI button, which is, I'm just going to move the microphone out of the way because I think it was trying to focus on the microphone. So there's a DPI button in the middle, which allows you for the quick switching between the different modes, and it's also nice and tactile and clicky. And then on the side, it's also textured, got a bit of a, a, a nice smooth surface there, but it's not slippery. And we've got a forward and back button there as well. Now the middle button, the scroll button, is actually also depressible. And that's nice and clicky as well. And we go on to the bottom, as the quick guide talks about. Uh, we've got one for lights off, two color indicated by the DPI, and then three is color indicated with a breathing base. So there's one, two, and three, and by default, it's currently set on three. So let's uh, undo the cable and check out the length of the cable. Doesn't actually say how long the cable is, so not that it's a huge deal, but it really depends on your setup if you've got your desktop underneath your desk or if it's against the wall behind your monitor and something like that. So for me and my setup, I've got two monitors in front of me and the actual desktop is behind my right hand side monitor. So it does need to stretch probably about 40, 45 centimeters. Nothing major, but if I want a lot of freedom of movement, probably closer to, you know, a meter would be a good length. The Logitech one certainly has plenty of space. And so we're looking at I can double that over uh, and you can see it's got quite a good length. Um, I would say you're probably going to get to about two meters is, is the feel of how long that is. Um, generally for humans, your arm span tip to tip is about your height and so I'm about 170, 677 centimeters and I can probably get this arm span and it's got a bit of slack, which means it's probably close to about maybe 180, probably about a, a meter 80, six foot thereabouts um, is probably how long the cable is. So how flexible is this cable at the front joint? Because I know that some other mice brands are very particular about this in that this front part is often where it fails because uh, when you move the mouse around, you know, it jiggles and it wiggles and it gets a lot of wear and tear. And I know that for some brands, they've even got a bit of hard material, aluminium or something like that, which comes out and protects the actual joint to the mouse. And so the flex happens further up. Now, the cable is actually quite soft. It's quite flexible. You can see as I'm moving it, 
the, the cable guard protection there is actually moving with it, which is great. Obviously, only time will tell, but looking at, at where it flexes, the actual base of it is not moving. Uh, and, and I think that's great because if the base starts to move it, that's going to really affect what's happening inside. Whereas, of course, if it's moving further up in the join, then, you know, not so much connecting to the terminal, the terminations inside. All right, now I'm just going to take that cover off. I've got a, a little USB extender over here, so it's nice and convenient. And I can't really tell in the light, but it kind of has a goldy color to it, whether it's actually gold plated or not, or if it's just anodized gold, brassy color. Um, does it really matter? No, not really. And here we go. Oh, hey, look at that. Now, it lights up green by the looks of it. Um, it's quite bright, which it's not really showing right now because the room lights are on. So I'm just going to go and switch them off. And there you go. So I'm sitting in darkness, illuminated just by the monitors. And you can sort of see there's the light intensity. Uh, and if I'm going to cycle through oh, the breathing, uh, the DPI, I've just clicked it once and now it's gone to blue. I've clicked it again and now it's gone to white and it's breathing. So you can see the, the halo from the white as it's breathing is pretty nifty. If I press it again, now we've gone to a, a purpley magenta color and it's also breathing. We've gone to a red and that's breathing. And we're back to the green and it's green. Ah, and it's green. It's green and it's breathing. So I think the initial setting, of course, wasn't breathing. And as I press that DPI button, it sort of kicked it into mode. Now, if I, of course, flip it into number two, now that there is no instructions about unplugging or, or whatnot, so I'm just going to go straight into number two and put that back down again. It's not as bright by the looks of it. Um, is it breathing? does not look like it so now I'm just going to switch colors and uh, yeah doesn't seem to be changing in its intensity at all but it's nice that it does cycle through them depending on your DPI settings now nothing as far as I can tell has actually popped up um, indicating that it requires any software so it's straight plug and play and I'm using it right now on the computer to, to check my windows that nothing's come up about it so how do I know what DPI it is? I probably don't until I look at the card, which the card tells me based upon the colors. Purple, which I'm on right now, is 3200 DPI. So it's very sensitive. Um, and red is the lowest. So if we go again, and now we're on red, which, yep, yeah, you can, well, you won't be able to see it, but I can definitely see it. Uh, what I'll do is, uh, what am I doing? Maybe I should just switch up to a higher DPI. I'm trying to drag this mouse cursor across the screen at the lowest DPI possible. Um, I'm just going to clear my, my desktop and turn on the monitor share. And so this is on white. And that's on the purple. I'm just going to move the same amount with my wrist. There's the red, green, blue, white, and purple. So you can kind of see how much and how fast it's tracking with the same kind of arc range that I'm using with the mouse, which is which is pretty cool. Um, it's just a very quick and easy way of seeing how much that movement is. So let's just go back to our monitor. Interestingly enough, the actual LED brightness is not increasing or decreasing. Of course, if I go to one, all of the lights turn off. And then, of course, if I go back to three, um, it should start to breathe again, which, yep, there it goes. Now, I'm going to try and catch it when it's breathing on its brightest setting. Oh, okay. So the breathing has actually automatically cut off to sort of a mid-level 
once you switch modes. So it doesn't seem like you can actually adjust the brightness with uh, mode number two. So if you wait for it to actually go into a really bright state and then switch it over, so it's just uh, wait for it to go really bright. So that's really bright and it's dulling down really bright and see how it jumps straight back down to that lower mode. So that's just, uh, I wouldn't say it's a negative feature. Um, I mean, it still lights up and it's still quite pretty. Obviously the saturation on the camera is not really showing that very well, but uh, it could be nice if you could adjust the brightness of it. It's a good medium position for that light feature, but uh, yeah, it's just a, a thing that you could potentially look at for any future revisions. All right. Um, Besides the fit, I'm just going to turn turn the light back on. Turn the light back on. So let's just check out in terms of hand size and fit. Um, that's my hand. Here's a ruler. Don't have a banana for scale. We're looking at my my palm width is about 11 centimeters roughly. From fingertip to wrist, you're looking at about 18 centimeters. For fingers, closed of course, is about just under 8 centimeters, and then from fingertip, middle finger to the base of my fingers is roughly 8.5 centimeters. So that's one way to just maybe compare relative hand sizes if you're considering this. The palm cross is looking about 10.5 centimeters there. If we measure the mouse itself, uh, if we go by the base at least, because that's nice and flat. The finger section, you're looking at about five centimeters. And then from top to tail, it's about 11 and a half centimeters. Curvature wise, uh, there's the side profile there of the curvature. It's fairly normal. There's nothing terribly exaggerated about it. It doesn't have a high sort of back that you can see on some models, especially the ones that are where you can adjust it with the back plate, like the, the cat system, the mad cat system, that kind of thing. Um, there's certainly nothing that you can take off and change or replace, and it doesn't have any weight adjustment on it either. Now, in terms of comparison with, say, an older model that you can sort of see, the length of my G9 is actually shorter, but it has this shell that you can put on it. So the shell does actually protrude further with that thumb rest. Um, if we stack it directly on top, you can kind of see that's very similar width at the top, but the base with that thumb rest, as I was mentioning, has sort of, oh, the cable's trying to move, is, is sticking out a lot more. Um, in terms of if we go the other way and we put the, maybe it's easy to put it that way, if we put the, uh, the G9 on top, you can kind of see it does protrude out from about that mid logo position onwards. Um, weight, G9 is obviously heavier, but that's to be expected. I'm going to just pull out my, uh, my scales and we can see, well, I can see, <laughs> uh, my little ones obviously being very upset in the background. I don't know if it's coming across in the video or not, but uh, what can you do? So I'm going to put that on and it weighs approximately 103 grams with the cable being resting on the actual scale. And if I take the G9 with all the weights in it as a comparison, it's 134 grams. So about 30% heavier. Okay. Alrighty. Hello. What are you getting all upset about? Hmm? Daddy's doing a mouse review. Hmm? You like that? Hey, it's all nice and shiny and bright. Huh? Can I come and sit in? Ah. So, yeah. I think it's, it's a nice mouse. I mean, nice is a very subjective word, of course, but it feels nice and smooth. It's very clicky. It does everything that it needs to. The feet are very smooth. It's a good, comfortable fit for me on my hand. Now, I'm not a complete claw, so the claw style versus like a, a palm style, but if I just gently rest my hand there on the actual mouse itself, 
the curvature does fit well for my sized hand. If you had a much larger hand, you would probably drag more of your wrist on the actual table surface because your fingers are going to be longer. Uh, and of course, if you had a smaller hand, you'd find that there's going to be more contact with the palm section. Now, my wife here is just on the side and <laughs> she's got much smaller hands. If you want to put your hands out, uh, just flip palm up. Okay, so her hands versus my hands, right? Much smaller. And if she holds the mouse, it sort of sits a lot higher up on the palm. Yeah? So that's kind of a, a good middle size. Now, you currently use a razor. Uh, it's a Naga, I believe, is, is what she has. In terms of comparison with that, how do you feel? How, how does that look? Now, I'm not obviously going to get you to unplug your mouse, but very similar size. <laughs> Similar, the base of this one is wider. So the base of the Naga is wider than the base of the pluggable. Um, in terms of texture and feel compared to the Naga, because the Naga is quite sort of, they consider it a relatively, it used to be a high end for Razor's lineup. Mm. It's quite smooth. It's quite smooth? I mean, pretty old now. <laughs> <laughs> comparing it with a, with a pretty old. So, yeah. Um, now, of course, it's a little bit early for me to say in terms of performance how it will do by comparison to, obviously, a mouse that I'm a lot more familiar with. But, um, oh, you're waving, are you? You're waving? Hmm. Who are you waving to? You're just idly waving to the air. Um, but I'll give it a run for a couple of days, and then, of course, I'll come back to this video and give my verdict. So yeah, good looking mouse, nice and simple, plug and play, no drivers required, has some backlit, backlit can be turned off if you don't want it. So I think we'll leave that for the moment uh, and I'll give it a, a bit of a go for a couple of days, see how it does, um, play a couple of games, use it for just day to day and then yeah, we'll come back with the second half of this video and my conclusions for the video. So. I'll be back very soon. Okay, so I'm back on to do the second half of the pluggable mouse review. Uh, it's been four days now since I started using the pluggable mouse and I think I've got a pretty good kind of feel about the mouse and I thought I'd just wrap up and, and talk about my experience using the pluggable mouse. So of course, just going back to uh, the box again, there it is, the pluggable performance mouse for gaming and precision applications. And of course, flipping it over, just having it look at some of those specs. My thoughts on it is, it's a really nice mouse. Um, it does have a couple of things that I have personal preferences about, but overall, I don't have any issues with it. It wasn't glitchy. Um, it, Well, I mean, it's a mouse, right? Yes, there are good mice, there are bad mice. Um, it does the job, of course. I didn't have any issues with misclicks. Uh, I didn't have any issues with overshoots or undershoots simply because with the adjustment of the DPI, you can get your personal preference. It's still plugged in and I am using it as my daily mouse after four days, so I haven't exactly rage quit and thrown it out the window or anything like that. You'll notice that by default, um, and this is plugged in right now, of course, is that I've got the LED off and that's just a personal preference. But if I switch it over, of course, you'll be able to see that I've got it on the DPI setting for white, um, which I can't remember what off the top of my head is, but I've got it next to me here, so on 1200 DPI. I would actually have preferred it to be a little bit higher, um, probably around 14, because going up, no, white 16, sorry, um, and purple is 3200, so it must be a little bit higher, probably around 2000, because I do find that I want it to move a little bit faster, but not too much faster. But, you know, it's perfectly acceptable really for what I do, what I use, what I play. Over the last four days, um, I've been playing mostly a bit of League of Legends, uh, player unknowns battlegrounds, and of course, general everyday use, web browsing, you know, a bit of catting, that kind of stuff, Word documents, work from home, um, and yeah, no technical issues. In terms of personal preferences, I still do find that 
the mouse is a little bit on the light side physically in terms of its grammage. Now 30 grams doesn't seem like a lot when you compare it to my old Logitech G9 that I was using, the G9X, but it is noticeable in regards to just the solidness of the feel when you're, when you're sliding around. The other thing is the slim form factor is definitely noticeable. So if you're used to having a mouse that's got a larger, rounder, wider palm section, you will experience and notice that difference initially. Now, while it is still something that I am noticing now because just resting my hand on it, um, there is there is cavity, there is void space here around the inside of my palm, but it's not a it's not a deal breaker. Uh, you know, it's just something that I will get accustomed to with over time. Not not really an issue at all. Um, nice and smooth. No issues with catching or binding. Just on my very ordinary uh, Call of Duty mouse pad that I'm still using. <laughs> Even though I do have some really nice desk mats, it's just because they're laid out on my desk and the stuff that I do on it. I can't use the desk mat here at home. Um, yeah, otherwise there's not terribly, terribly much to say. Now in regards to the surface and shine, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up very well. Um, no, it's... Uh, well, you can kind of... There you go. You can kind of see that there's some light patches there. That are happening. Um, it's not super noticeable when you look at it straight down 90 degrees, but uh, I think the light source is kind of giving it a bit of a wig out there. Uh, when you look at it straight down, you don't really notice it, but it's only when you're looking at it from an angle that you will see the finger oils and shine that's starting to build up on it. Now, it's not affecting the texture or the grip of it, but in terms of its look, um, you can definitely see where my finger placements are and the angle that I hold it because I don't hold straight on but it seems like that my fingers go a little bit sideways and I think that might be because of the fact that I'm trying to nestle the curvature of the mouse to fit into my hand because you can see how having that angle fits in whereas if it's straight on I end up with this gap space on this side where the fatter Logitech mouse that I used to have wasn't doing that. I did mention in the first part of the video also that I am accustomed to having a, a thumb shelf which obviously the pluggable doesn't have but after probably about you know a couple of hours I stopped dragging my thumb around and I did lift it what is the long-term effect of that I don't know is it extra sort of thumb muscle use probably but I don't think I'm gonna get RSI or anything like that I also did mention that initially when I started using it that it felt like it was a bit stiffer in terms of the actual click behavior. It has kind of worn in there, which is really nice. So I'm not feeling that noticeable difference and I'm not experiencing any more fatigue. Now, I don't know if that's just because my fingers have got stronger in the last four days clicking brand new mouse switches or it's just because it's broken in that it is sort of worn into that nice feel spot. The clicks are nice and loud. Uh, they're very responsive as I said no real issues double clicks nice and quick the forward and back buttons are fine although because of the length of my thumb um, I would actually probably prefer them to be a little bit more forward just so that I don't have to bend my thumb as much to use the back button overall that's uh, pretty much the only sort of changes that I would say the LED issue with intensity and, and the breathing modes and stuff like that doesn't really bother me. Uh, the cable's been performing quite nicely. It's it's very flexible. It's not really holding any particular position. Um, it is very long, but that's great because I can route it however I like to get to where I need to. And of course the slack of that, I can just sort of, you know, move around, cable tie, cable manage, whatever, etc., etc. The other thing that's happened in the last couple of days since I got this is now that the plug on mouse is actually listed on their Amazon site. So I'm just going to switch over to the monitor and uh, there you go. So if you're interested after you've seen this video and you do want to give it a, a try and check it out, it's very affordable. If you look at that, it's only $39.95 US with free shipping. I'm assuming that's, you know, within the US. Um, June 14th, so it's actually in a couple of days time. Obviously, this is just going to be a pre-order and 
you can see the breakdown of the mouse, the internal components, um, as well as some sort of details and specs there. Nice and clean. Um, yeah, some glamour shots. Of course, the details there as well. The different color modes. Uh, yeah, there you go. Some dimensions, some weights. And uh, manufacturer answer. Official launch is the June 12th but opening the listing for a limited number of units for purchase prior to this. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, I'm just going to wrap up on the review now. Uh, what can I say? Like, it's a nice little mouse. Does the job. A little bit lighter than I would prefer. Behaves excellent. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would really enjoy using this mouse because of the quality. It's got a good feel to it. It's not cheap. Doesn't feel like a, a $10 Dell or a, you know, Microsoft mouse, that kind of thing. Uh, and it certainly hasn't let me down in any of the games that I've played. Very responsive. It's all down to the user not being a pro. So, if you do like this review, please hit like. Uh, it would help us greatly, and of course, it would also support Pluggable. Thank you, Pluggable, for providing me this mouse to review. Really appreciate it. And I do feel that it's probably going to end up being my main driver now, especially because my old G9 is starting to fail. One of the, the mouse switches is double-clicking at random times, which is not optimal, of course. Um, yeah, please share this, of course, with anyone who's interested in checking out a review, of course, of the Pluggable mouse. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, I would also love and appreciate your subscription. So thank you for coming along, checking it out, and as usual, until next time, happy clacking.